This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Yeah. That, yeah, you're right. We should have done the brother count. I was I was thinking about something. I'm seeing Hogan there. Let me ask you this. What do you think Hogan is going to be most remembered for? Hulkamania or Hollywood Hogan? Hulkamania. Okay, me too. As well, the, I am. the Hollywood Hogan thing was a big deal. Obviously. Unbelievable. But, you know, it didn't lead to cartoons and lunch boxes and you know, all that jazz. Right. Yeah. And, and I get that. I, uh, and of course, if it wasn't for Hulk media, Hollywood Hogan wouldn't have had the impact it had. So I, but I guess there's some people that think on a national level, maybe, uh, I don't know. I don't think anybody could even really argue that. I do think Hogan is criminally underrated as far as when people talk about the contributions to wrestling, it feels like a lot of times people more and more, they start making these lists and Mount Rushmore conversations without Hogan in it. It's just had Hulk Hogan not become the, had the NWO not existed. I don't think stone cold happens the way it did. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, you're right. And listen, uh, the people who shit on Hogan are the, the people who have the, what I call the Melcher bias. They just didn't like him. He wasn't the quote unquote worker. And he was, he had all these political things going on backstage and you know what? Those, those things backstage politically happen because they, we let them happen. Um, but I'm a, I've always been a big Hulk Hogan fan in many ways because I remember the Hulkamania. I remember Hulkamania. Hell, I just, how old were, let's see, in the eighties, you were like in middle school, right? No, uh, I was born in 1981. So when Hulkamania started, uh, I was uh two and a half years old. So you were, yeah. All right. So you were very, very young. Yeah. Right. But those were great days in wrestling. Even, even though, you know, in 83, I was working for a competitor. I thought those were, those were great days in wrestling. The, the amount of attention that Hulk Hogan gave to the business being on the cover of sports illustrated, those, you know, those. This was something else. And here we got uh, our buddy Paul White, who, by the way, we all knew at that time that he could move and work way better than any guy that size we'd ever seen. And for him, after talking to him, this was – being in the ring with Hulk Hogan was a big moment for him because he, he grew up in South Carolina and he was a big Hulkamaniac, according to – all that he's talked about. And so now he's in with his idol here. And, uh, again, as a big man, boy, Paul white could move. Couldn't he? Oh, big time. Yeah. He was, yeah, he's such an athlete here in this era. It's right. crazy to think about even. Yeah. And again, like, like all big men, including Hogan, he has certainly had his, his bumps and, and injuries and he's had hip surgery and hip replacement and it comes from not only age, but it also comes from just all the bumps, buddy. You got a bump card, right? God. So this is that we're in the middle of the, I guess we're in the middle of the dungeon of doom stuff, right? Are we at the end? Of oh it? yeah. 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 Dungeon yeah. of doom stuff is, really what we're going to be doing on the next show, you know, with the whole 98 guys versus you get where I'm going. Yeah. Hey, so let me mention this show Meltzer gave, or this match Meltzer gave one star, one star, one star. Whoa, man. And when it came to the worst match poll, it came in third. They thought Conan and one man gang was worse. I right. agree. Mm-hmm. They thought Kevin Sullivan and Brian Pillman was worse. Uh, it's more of a story than a match to me. Right. But this comes in third. Overall though, as we start winding down the show and I know it's not done yet, 21.8% thumbs up, 59.7% thumbs down, 18 and a half percent thumbs in the middle. What say you, Tony tone tone thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. Well, I, I look at it through uh, WCW colored glasses. I'm going to say thumbs in the middle. 
I, I didn't think the, I don't know. I just, I didn't think it was that bad of a show. I don't think you can give the show a thumbs down. It had some intriguing storylines, and obviously the, the most intriguing storyline was the one that was a work shoot, but uh, the, the Mean Gene interviews in the back, you know, I don't know what they're rating it on. Just watch, they were they watching the show or just they rated based on the matches. I love the Mean Gene stuff in the back. I love the Liz turn, which was, if you think about Randy, we talked about it, we think about Randy and Liz um, and how much they have done together. Her turning on him was quite a big moment. The Luger thing was cool. Um, so, yeah, thumbs in the middle. And, and some of the bad matches, you know, brought it down, but I don't think you give it a thumbs down. That say me. Now, fast forward. Uh, years later, there's going to be a lot of thumbs downs here. But then again, you know, sometimes we look back at those shows, Conrad, during the the real bad era of WCW, and the shows sometimes not that bad, are they? We shut on them back then, we look back, and then when we watch them, it's like, hey, there's some good things that went on here. And this is obviously before the uh, cruiserweight era. So once the cruiserweights hit, things are really going to pick up. God, Jimmy worked the crowd so well. That's so important. We don't talk about that enough. And I'm, I know we mentioned a couple of weeks ago when we talked about Alex Aberhantes and how he works the crowd uh, with the Lucha Brothers, but working the crowd as a as a manager is so so underrated. Is Hogan juiced already? No, he hasn't. Yeah, you know, these guys are doing, these guys are doing, you got two big, big guys. This is all you're going to get from them. Yeah. That's it. I mean, if you, you're not going to get, you know, a Ura Conrada off the top rope. Or oh, t- is that why you pronounce it now? Ura? Yeah, Ura. That's what Conan told me to pronounce it one time. Okay. He said it's Ura Kanana. Okay. And uh, or you're not going to get a Tiatis off the top rope. I, I know yeah. what that is. Yeah. Or a tu- tope tupi or a tope suicida. <laughs> not going to get it from these big guys. You'll get plotting and bear hugs and slow work and grabbing. And throwing up against, that's what you're going to get. Don't I don't know what you're waiting for. So what I'm thinking is, or what I'm saying is that basically Meltzer knew what he was going to give this match from the get-go. He knew in his mind, this match is going to be shitty, and regardless of what they do, I'm going to give it a shitty rating. There's bias in that. There's bias in everything we do. but Not to shit on Dave Meltzer because I like Dave, respect him. Like he, I like Wade Keller a lot. Respect him. It's about as far as it goes. Uh, but you you have a in your mind, you, you think I'm going to rate this low. It's either going to be a one star or below. And so maybe by Melcher giving this a one star, it was better than he thought it would be. Well, yeah. I mean, he's given it a lot. I mean, over the years, he's given a lot of Hogan matches really, really poor ratings. Yeah. How that kid get up in the air for a big guy like that. Now Hogan has juiced here. I think, yeah. I like. Do you view this era of WCW? I mean, obviously it's not nearly as hot as it's going to get with the NWO, but. You know, you've said a lot. Oh, I just thought they were going to come close the door anytime. No, yeah. I think you really mean like 91 92 93 94 95 but at this point nitro's on the air you're going live every week you're competing with vince you're 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 back and forth there's rumors i mean you've got hogan now you've got savage now there's rumors that kevin nash might be coming in or davy boy might be coming in and supposedly wcw turned to profit for the very first time in 1995 i'm saying all that to say did you start to feel like okay well yeah, I did. 
And I did actually I did and when I did uh when we had Hogan and Flair at uh, Bash of the Beach in 94. That's when it started but 90, 91, 92 and 93. No. Even the beginning of 94. No, I thought, well, not much longer, guys. Especially during the Jim Hurt era. Jesus. Right. That was a shit show from the word go and that's and that I mean that's would cause me to call Vince and beg for my job back working under that regime. That was just absolutely, that was fucking nuts. That was just combative and everybody pissed off at everybody every day and looking to fuck someone over and wow, just didn't need that stress in my life. And of course I was younger, so I still thought, that I could have an impact in the business backstage in the front office. And I didn't. And now I don't worry about that. It's a different, uh, it's almost like a whole new ball game. Is it not? Yeah. Yeah. For all the, the talk about, oh, it was better back in the day. It wasn't. No, it was working conditions are insanely better now than they used to be. Well, I think when people are saying it's better back in the day, they're thinking about in their fandom. And I think it has more to do with the fan than it does the actual presentation of the wrestling. Yeah, you're right. Like, you know, you and I've had a theory that we've talked about here that our old cl great close personal friend, Brian Rogers from South Carolina first dropped on me that everybody has a 10 year period. So it's like a 10 year period of music that you like best of all, right? A 10 year period of television shows or movies or wrestling or sports. Mm -hmm. Like if I was to, if you asked me, you know, Hey, name eight 49ers from, you know, your favorite 49ers team with Joe Montana back in the day, buddy, I could rattle it off. Yeah. But if you were to say, Hey, name, name six 49ers today, I would struggle. Yeah. So I think it was just, that's when I was at my height of my football fandom. And, and, and this, what we're watching is not exactly when I'm at my height of my wrestling fandom, but if you asked me something about 97, I could probably nail it. Sure. But if you ask me about 2017, I'm going to struggle. Yeah. And I think it has more to do with me and less to do with the product. And I say that because, you know, there's times where I've been watching, and she doesn't watch anymore, but a few years ago when my daughter was watching, she was so in love with, you know, this thing or that thing. And I'm like what you like that mm. so you know it's just not for us that's all yeah no i get that i i mentioned on the show before that that i can basically name every world series champion from 1955 probably through 20 2000 and probably through 2005 6 7 8 2008 but then i got lost yeah after that it's like i'm not so sure Look at how terrible this is a, a bear hug in the middle of the ring. I'm glad that we don't see this anymore. This is just not good. You don't like bear hugs. I know. Well, they're, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've seen them where they're done well, but where these guys are just look, they're, they're, they're trying to dock right now. <laughs> yeah. They're trying to see who's, who's Peter's going to battle. Who's going to win. They're, they're playing arm wrestling with wiener meats. No, no, they're not. He's trying to stick his hands down. But, okay. Yeah. This is a version of. The Yeti dry humping Hulk Hogan. And Hogan's going out. My God, he can't take much more. Uh, I love how Kevin Sullivan would paint his forehead. I've got to call Kevin, see how he is, check up on him. He's uh, just recently started doing another podcast again. I think he's. Uh, working with, uh, the wrestling historian on Instagram, him and uh, Dutch Mantel. So oh, very lots good. Of folks telling some stories out there these days. Yeah, man. A lot of great stories out there. This is the era too, where I think Jimmy Hart and I were riding together a lot. There was a time where, you know, of course we would do a, a pay-per-view and then we would go to do Monday nitro. So we would drive somewhere else to do nitro. Um, like for instance, with just between St. Pete and Tampa, wasn't much, but we would drive some. Then, then of course the uh, the Thunder era came in, 
Uh, but a lot of times there was a, a period where Jimmy Hart and I drove together a lot. And then all of a sudden it stopped. It's almost as if Jimmy got mad at me for some reason. I don't know what happened, but we stopped riding together. And I don't know. Should we call him and ask? Nah, I, I really enjoyed his company. And I specifically remember, and I think I've mentioned this before, one night where we drove uh, from Sacramento to Reno and we drove across Donner's Pass, through Donner's Pass, and it was snowing like hell. And I was driving, he was in the front seat, and Oakland was in the back seat. And we were playing in sync uh, in their brand new, <laughs> yes, he loved boy bands. Jimmy oh. loved boy bands. So he wanted to hear the new in sync uh, album or cassette, and we listened to it and played it. And we're singing along with it and kept replaying some of the songs, and Gene started singing along with us. And I'm thinking, me and Okerlund and Jimmy Hart are singing Bye Bye Bye, and it's snowing like hell. You, you, you can't get any better than that. Wow. Yeah, Jimmy, yeah. of course, Jimmy was in the boys' band, right? I mean, he was in. The Gentries. The Gentries, right. Keep on dancing. It, they played that on Sirius XM the other day. He's one of the nicest dudes in wrestling, too, by yeah. the way. He's one of the hardest working promoters in wrestling too. He always had came up with ideas about how to do things. I'm really, really upset that his, uh, Tiki bar didn't last, but there you go. I guess it went down even before COVID. Here comes a bunch of, uh, a big body slam maybe. And then a bunch of leg drops. Let's track it and hear the audience here. Okay. What do you think of that? Boys, he ain't getting up. As we say in Virginia, boys, he ain't getting up. But he did get up, by God. Hey, you know, he slammed him with pretty much ease that time. Yeah. That's well, pretty... it's a different animal to slam Andre versus. Yeah. I mean, Paul White here can can, can Go kip up. up. Right. Yeah, Paul can help you up. Andre, in, in his later years, obviously could not. But after three leg drops, Paul comes back up. Now, whoa, that's something. There's the nasty plunge, and here he comes. Oh, that's right. The The idea is to escape the cage. Yes, it's the old WWF bullshit rules. Right. And there it is. Hulk Hogan wins, and immediately he's greeted with a chair across the back from Kevin Sullivan. <laughs> this guy, this foam hand. What the hell? He's really excited to show that to Kevin Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> in the ring he goes and of course everybody's excited this means hogan's going to be in there with the leader of the dungeon of doom in the chair but guess what the giant's in there too and here come the rest of the heels and they are going to get on his ass and this is where we're going to reveal the loch ness monster right Yes. And, and when they start to make their way out, I think we should track it just so we can hear your call for Loch Ness. Cause you know, we're going to be able to make fun of it. Let's okay. track it. Here we go. Ask about it. The barbarian. You ask about it. Face of the fear. Hugh Morris. Hugh Morris. Morris. There's a shark. shark. Oh, Zodiac. One man getting the entire to the doom. And he could not get him off the wall. But look at him. This looks like a John Lane movie. Get him, baby. Get him off. There you go. Deal on him, Hogan. So Deal yeah. on him. The Giant. Hit first. There you go. Now, now, blom him, blom him. Blom him. Hogan, one man fighting the entire Dungeon Doom. And I tell one you what, seven. Tony, the Dungeon and Doom are retreating. Look, where's the Giant going? Where's There's, the Giant going? They are retreating. And here comes the Loch Ness Monster. Look at the size of that guy. The giant 
is walking back to the locker room. He is gone, and the Loch Ness Monster will make it eight men to go into Pummel Hulk Hogan. Yeah, but you know what? I'll tell you what, Tony. He's got him in a situation now with that chair to where he's got him holding him at bay, and that's what he needs to do. The immortal Hulk Hogan holding off the Dungeon of Doom. No, oh, no, let him go. I want to see him go. I want to see what this is all about. They are holding back the Loch Ness Monster because Hogan, wielding a chair, has held off the entire Dungeon of Doom. Incredible. Wow. As it may seem, the man. Oh, God, we have got it right there. I was all excited to hear your big call because, you know, we had the big Yeti, but we didn't get it there. But still, the Loch Ness Monster is here, and mm. uh, unfortunately, no one really cares. But, boy, do we care about next week because we've got a big show coming your way. It's yeah. Wrestle War 1990. Oh, my God. And I just absolutely love this show. This is uh, the Wild Thing show. we got Kevin Sullivan and Buzz Sawyer taking on the Dynamic Dudes. we got Norman the Lunatic taking on Cactus Jack. We got the rock and roll express taking on the midnight express. We got the road warriors taking on the skyscrapers. We got Pillman and zinc taking on the fabulous Freebirds. We got the Steiner brothers taking on Ole and Arn. Then in the main event, it's Ric Flair who has woman by his side, defending the NWA world heavyweight championship against Lex Luger, who has sting by his side, February 25th, 1990. This should be good fun, man. I'm looking forward to that one. I am too, because how shitty is this standoff? Yeah, they didn't, it, they didn't let him get into the ring. Look, yeah, it's almost say, look. It's almost like there's there's a drunk old fat man that 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 uh, security's taken out here. Is that not what it is? I guess it is in many ways. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.